Hey guys, so today I will be talking about a couple of topics that are of direct interest to me. Um, one of them is going to be CDK, the other one would be Cognito, the other one would be React, React.js to be specific, and uh, GitLab. All right, so at the end of the day today, what you're going to get, or at least what you're going to see, is a sample project with a really well-defined CDK code that creates your Cognito stack, your Cognito Lambda functions, uh, the triggers, a DDP table, or um, DynamoDB table, and cloud fr uh, front and S3 bucket to host your single page application, which in my case is a React.js application. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, this is the project, right? So if you can see, um, this is the CDK project, right? So uh, all of this code, uh, once deployed, will deploy all of these resources for you. So CDK, as I mentioned in my previous video, is a framework that facilitates the provisioning of AWS infrastructure and AWS resources. So basically, at the end of the day, this code is translated into cloud formation and then it's handed off to cloud formation service and the service takes care of actual provisioning of the uh, services and the infrastructure so i've been struggling with uh, some of the things that i've been working with and um, right now i'm working on a fun project uh, which is basically a video platform, I would say, uh, that would allow people to play this game. And uh, the point of this video is not this game, not this project, but um, it's relevant since I will be actually working on this project and open sourcing more and more code that helps me so as uh, to make sure that it you know eventually helps you all right so let's take a look at this code uh this is the application this is the main function right that uh, main method that uh, um, actually declares all the stacks and uh, these stacks once deployed uh will actually uh, realize into AWS resources. Now, the deployment steps are here. I have um, specified what you need to do. You have to do a Maven package and then a CDK synth. And then uh, you do either a CDK deploy, which deploys everything, which I don't suggest doing. Uh, I would suggest taking it a step at a time. Uh, or, as you can tell, these... Um, steps here so first you would deploy the uh, the, uh, the dynamodb table then you would deploy um, the lambda stack then you would deploy the cognito stack and then you would deploy the spa um, the single page um, application stack which deploys your cloud front it provisions your um, certificate and also the S3 bucket. So let's take a look at this stack because it's important since you will be making changes to it. Now the application that I'm working on is called Secret Wit. Um, so that's why you see Secret Wit here and secretwit.com. Um, if you go there right now, there's probably nothing there yet, at least depending on when you're actually watching this video. Uh, hopefully in a month or so there's going to be a full-blown game there but the uh, process here is as you can see I'm actually deploying the certificate or creating the certificate now what's gonna happen here what's gonna happen is when I when this code executes 
it actually is going to send you an email to admin at the domain name.com right so obviously you will change the domain name from secretwith.com to something else uh, because otherwise i'm going to get that email and you don't want me to get that email so when you change that during the whole deployment process the actual deployment is going to stop it's going to wait on you to um, click on the link that went out within this email so this link will basically confirm that you own this domain name otherwise nothing is going to happen from what i understand the deployment is going to fail so you want to make sure that you watch that email uh, or you watch for an email to come your way uh, to admin at your domain name now after that's provisioned uh, i'm provisioning the bucket here here you don't have to change much except the bucket name uh, so the bucket name will change obviously you know whatever you see secret with just change that the bucket name will have to change it's going to have to be unique one way or another so you will have to pick something unique and the allowed origins this stays the same as you can tell as you can see the um, website index document and the website error documents are the same they're pointing to index.html uh, the reason for that is that with angular and with uh, react.js and i'm sure with other frameworks the routing engine of the actual framework takes care of uh, resolving those errors so um, you want to keep it at index.html and uh, the routing engine will figure out where to take the customer right where to take the the viewer i don't want to get into the details of why uh, this is the case and how it's the case just pointing it out so you can change it if you want to but again if you're deploying a react js or an angular application you might uh, it might backfire and here is where i deploy the cloud front web distribution so um, again change the instances where you see secret with uh, the response path path uh, page path is the same the default root object is the same um, so as you can see the arrow configuration here also points to index.html again same idea if you're using a react.js or a angular application um, maybe view has the same same idea behind it just keep it at index.html now what happens when you deploy this when you deploy this uh, you will see something like this you will see a whole bunch of stacks here so as you can see i've deployed more stacks because this is an actual application that i'm writing so um there's uh, multiple tables and stuff like that but you're gonna see um, one two three four four stacks and these four stacks will contain everything you need to um, have in order to work with the react.js starter application that i have i have open sourced so one thing that i do want to show you is this cognito setup and uh, if we go in here uh, as you can see we already have one user uh, this particular user is confirmed so what happens here is i also create the lambda functions for two of the triggers so these two triggers will do the following thing the first one is the pre-sign up so the pre-sign up trigger auto confirms the user the user upon sign up will be auto confirmed so the user is not going to get an email um, and the user is going to be automatically active nothing needs to be done by you or the user this is uh, good 
but you want to have a follow-up email or some kind of a follow-up process to make sure that this user is a valid user and this email is a valid email. Um, the reason I am auto-confirming my users is because uh, I believe it's a better user experience. I don't want them to go to the um, uh, to fetch their email and not being able to log in at that moment. If it's, let's say, a more, I would say, serious website, like a financial website, then definitely I want them to confirm their email. And most likely they will, they will take the time to confirm that email. But again, it really comes down to what type of an application you're creating. Now, what else? Uh, the other trigger is the post confirmation trigger uh, that's where that's where um, the user upon being confirmed and the confirmation is done automatically so this trigger is always going to trigger um, I take the information about this user and I propagate it to my DynamoDB table and why do I do that well I want to make sure that I use that information in my downstream services so I basically create a user entity in my DynamoDB users table and that users entity will be able to I will be able to use that user entity uh, for all the other user related records like which games this user is part of uh, which groups this user is part of and so on and so forth I'm using the sub or generated by the Cognito servers so that's the unique ID that is associated with this user All right, let's take a look at the code. One second. Actually, before we do that, uh, let's take a look at the React.js application <laughs> and what I did there. So. Uh, this React.js application has been open sourced for a while now. Has a lot of um, it has a lot of um, stars associated with it. So here's the here's the application actually. Um, you can find it under my name and uh, React.js configure starter. Now what I did uh, just recently is I added this additional um, directory and I moved the React.js web app into its own folder. So uh, this is the CDK. This is where you would you know, run the Maven package. And this is where the actual web application is. Usually in production, I would have these um, two folders as two different um, repos for, since I'm open sourcing it and I'm kind of bundling them together, I didn't. Again, it's just for simplicity's sake, since I'm, I'm trying to kind of showcase the functionality of both. So uh, this React.js application, um, I wrote it a while back. And basically what it does is it demonstrates how to use React.js, Amplify SDK, and uh, Amazon Cognito. Out of the box, it provides you the functionality for a user to uh, sign up and sign in. And um, here's the only thing that you will need to change. Once you run your CDK application, you go into the, um, you go into the AWS configs JS file and you change these values. You change this pool ID value and you change the uh, web client ID value. These two values of um, values need to change, otherwise, obviously, it's not gonna work. All right, let's take a look at some of this code. So, what I do and what I've started doing recently is using GitLab for my um, Git repos and also for CI/CD. I think they have an excellent solution for CI CD and I'm actually in love with this. So I just want to show you why. Now this file, what it will do 
is it will deploy my react.js web application into the bucket and it's going to invalidate the CloudFront distribution so that the CloudFront distribution is going to get the latest code. Why is this important? Well, because you want to make sure that when you actually deploy the code, it immediately shows up in the CloudFront and it simplifies your um, deployment pipeline. So uh, this is... Uh, uh, quite simple to set up. The only thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you set up your AWS credentials as variables. And there's a lot of documentation on how to do that. So I am not going to go into the details here, but you will definitely need to set up your AWS credentials and you would also need to set up this variable. This variable uh, specifies the distribution ID of your CloudFront distribution. So if you don't have this uh, distribution ID, this command will fail. Now, you also need to specify the bucket name as a variable in GitLab. And uh, this bucket name is where you're actually going to um, push the files. Every single time you make a change to React.js to this application uh, in GitLab, it's going to trigger the CICD pipeline. So you need to make sure, make sure you understand that. By including this file, it's going to trigger the pipeline. So these variables should be created. Now it's going to fail the first time, uh, maybe when you, you know, commit this code and it's fine. It's fine. Uh, just make sure that you create those four variables. All right. So this is a really, really simple explanation of this project. I will um, talk a little bit more about what else I'm building when it comes to the original idea, um, the game idea, and I will be open sourcing some of that code as I did in this particular scenario. If you have any questions, please comment. If you like my videos, please subscribe and share them on social media. Um, I'm not really doing it for anything other than educational purposes. Uh, so. Uh, please give me props if they are due. If not, let me know what I can improve. All right, guys. I hope this was helpful to you. Bye.